Hey guys, and welcome to another Lightroom slash Photoshop tutorial. Today, I have an image that um, my friend took on her smartphone that she wanted to look a little bit more uh, sunny and more professional looking and just overall better. Um, so she was asking me if I could add any sun rays or um, just something to make it look more sunny and vibrant. So I'm just gonna do that and you'll see what I do. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do yet, so I gotta work it all out. It might look terrible at the end, who knows? But yeah, let's get started. So here is the image. First, I think the thing I'm gonna do is try to see how much actual room we have with, um, with our brightness and stuff before it starts clipping and all that. Not too much, I think it is just a JPEG from a phone, um, but we can still do a lot with it, and hopefully I can add some sunrays. Now something I used to do a lot and kind of messes me up when I'm editing photos from Photoshop back into Lightroom is if you edit the photo in Lightroom first and then do the Photoshop elements that are like fake and not from the photo, it doesn't feel as, feels like you can see the layers on top from the Photoshop. But if you start with the Photoshop stuff and then add the Lightroom stuff, it kind of bakes it all together and makes it look more professional and more like a whole cohesive image. So let's undo the edits I already started. Let's jump right into Photoshop. So light rays are a bit of a challenge because they only show up if there's something in the air that would catch the light, such as dust or something like that. And it only shows up if the background is darker than the rays of light reflecting off that dust. So with an image like this, the sun rays aren't gonna show up in this area um, where the sky is behind it because it's too bright. You wouldn't be able to see it. But maybe down here past the trees and into the water, they might show up there. So we're gonna try and make that look good. Let's give it a shot. First thing we have to do is take note on the angle of the sun. Um, we can do this by zooming into what sun we do see on these trees and on this rock. It seems to be coming pretty much directly at like this angle, maybe. Looks about right. You don't have to get it exact, it just shouldn't be completely wrong from the background. Um, so let's try to make the angle stay like almost horizontal. So we're making the light ray like a slight orange tint because it is sunset. So we are gonna be getting that uh, coming through. But um, yeah, let's tone down this ray because obviously it's just a big old white solid right now. I'm gonna do that by adding a, what is this called again? I'm gonna do this by adding a layer mask and just kind of taking away portions because light rays are being broken up by leaves and stuff and like that. So let's do that. This tool right here is just the polygon lasso tool. It just allows me to make um, selections that are relatively straight and uh, yeah that's about all it's doing so we're gonna say there's a break in it right there but I don't want it to be fully broken up because this tree has like small leaves and branches and stuff so we'll say a little bit of light got through You know what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna make this, since it is gonna be further back, I'm gonna make it an entirely separate layer. So we'll have these three rays coming from the front and then let's make a new layer. I'll actually just duplicate this layer. Uh, and a 
erase. No. And erase everything. There we go. It's all blacked out. And then let's make our selection here. So let's have it coming through like right here. So that looks about right. And then let's go into our layer mask and fill that back in. Perfect. Let's start turning these down because they're just big old things right now. So let's find a blending mode that looks like it works. Might just turn the opacity down actually. Oh, something else we really need to do is blur the heck out of it. Let's see, blur. Let's do like that much, but I actually don't think they're big enough. So let's just make these a little bit bigger. Let's do that. Let's apply the same filter to this one. We can just hit the Gaussian blur, it saves what we did last. And then we need to tone down that one's opacity. We'll do the same thing. We'll do, instead of 29%, it's a little bit further. So let's go down lower to like 20%. There we go, that looks nice. So this is pretty subtle right now, which I think is good. We don't want it to be too crazy. I think what we'll end up doing to make it stand out a little bit is put a light leak right over here, but I won't do it. Ugh, but I won't do that till the end. <laughs> um, another thing, like I was saying earlier, is it reflects off dust. So we kind of need dust to show where it's coming from. So let me figure that out. I think I might have a preset in here. Oh, that's not right. Make a new layer for the dust. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. I, I have a, a preset. I don't know if this is actually in. Oh, I think I downloaded these special effects brushes. I think. And it looks like paint splatter, so it's not even that good. So you can make a dynamic brush um, with little dots for dust, or you could just go in and dot it, or you could just Google image search um, a dust PNG, so like a file that has the background already gone, and just kind of insert that in and layer mask it so it looks right. Um, I'm just gonna use this paint splatter brush. It looks, uh, looks about good. I might edit the brush a little bit. Actually, let's do that so I can show you how to edit brushes. So we've got the dynamics. Um, I want to turn the size jitter down a little bit. Let's turn the maximum diameter down so it's a little bit smaller. Angle jitter, pump that up even more. Roundness jitter, pump that up even right about there. Minimum roundness. No minimum, really. We want it to look like dust, so they're these tiny little pieces. Uh, scattering, let's try to scatter it more. Dust's a little bit less, you know. Doesn't look like that, it looks more like that. Count jitter, turn up the count jitter. This is just adding randomness, really. Um, let's take away smoothing. No texture, no color dynamics. Okay, let's just do this. Let's change the color to just white, and then we'll add a, it's a little bit big, let's make it a little bit smaller. 
So we'll just go across the whole thing. And then we'll do that on all of them. Like such. And then let's add a layer mask so we can fine tune this a little bit more. Let's use just a normal, normal brush like this, feather it a little bit. And let's just get rid of it where it's not, um, Let's just get rid of it where it's not in the uh, light ray. Yeah, so like right there. And don't be afraid to cut into the light ray a little bit because like, it's dust. It's not everywhere. And this by all means does not look realistic, I don't think, at all even one of my favorite images that I've done this on, it, it just doesn't look real, but it looks cool. And like, it kind of, it's just a stylized look in my opinion. And I don't think it takes away from the image if you do this. Um, I think this image particularly, it might add a lot to it, but we'll have to see. I might finish this and go, ah, I hate it. Who knows? It happens a lot. Don't be discouraged if you finish editing an image and it takes a really, really, really long time and you do a lot of work and it looks like trash because sometimes that just happens no matter what. The image just isn't right for the edit or something like that. I'm, it just happens. It happens all the time, actually. All right, let's... Let's lower the opacity on these dust particles. Something like that. Another really good thing to do is, oops, just zoom out from your image and like, does that look right from here? Because the thumbnail version, if you do that, it'll help you kind of gain perspective on the image and is you'll get caught up in editing and just be like, oh, this tiny little detail doesn't look right. But if it looks right in like a smaller image that you're doing something right. I'm not sure if it looks right though. I don't, I don't think so actually. Just realize this is yeah, this is supposed to be coming from the tree. Oops. Like in here. So this is not supposed to be there. And then same with the dust. I think that angle looks a little bit better, a little bit more realistic. Let's back it up and check on it again. It's not bad. Let's add the light leak and then put it in the light room and add some edits on top and see how it looks. This image definitely not gonna be able to be, there's, we can't do too much to it. It has to be a subtle effect, otherwise it's not gonna look good. Um, I think we're pushing it a little bit right now, but, but we'll see when we finish the edit. Um, let me find a light leak somewhere randomly on the internet. Okay, so I found this image on the internet and I think this light leak slash lens flare will work for our purposes. So let's put it in and see if it does. We're just gonna align it with the image. Let's have it like this. Let's actually rotate it a little bit because of how I want it to look with the angle. I think this will look best. Maybe bring it in even more right there. Perfect. So we're gonna rasterize the layer and then add a blending mode. Let's see, which one is it? Uh, screen, yeah, let's add screen. Let's tone this bad boy down. It's 
something like that looks not terrible. Kind of looks like a lot though, and it's coming from a different angle. So let's let's adjust this angle even more so. big again like there maybe and then these edges we have to feather out so they don't look like they're just cut so we're gonna add a layer mask go in there and feather these edges out take a little bit off the top it's a little bit too much tone it down just in general okay Make sure you don't tone the super bright area too far down because that just doesn't make sense if it's too dark in this very bright corner. That's where the light leak is coming from. All right. That doesn't look too bad. This is, again, this is not a super, oh, my leg is so asleep right now. I can move my foot, but like I can't it moving okay one second okay so yeah this looks all right let's let's bring it in the white room and see if we can finish this up so we're gonna hit save and that's gonna automatically transfer back to Lightroom because we said we took the image in Lightroom and said edit in Photoshop so it was linked so it'll be back in Lightroom perfect with our edits um, I'm gonna use a visco filter because I love those filters and honestly it makes all of my editing stuff happen a lot quicker, so I'm gonna do that real quick. And uh, of course, go back in after and fine tune it. All right, I, I went with uh, AGFA Portrait XPS 160 plus, you know, that filter everybody knows about. Um, we're gonna fine tune it and try to make it look a little bit more natural. Um, so Visco does something cool that I like, which is grain. And if you're using an effect, grain can really help your image out because by adding grain, everything looks like it was taken by the same camera, even though the elements from Photoshop are naturally just really clean with no grain. Um, when you bring it into Lightroom and put the grain on top, it all has the same grain, it looks more cohesive like that, like I was saying. So let's add a little bit of grain. Whenever I have effects in my photos, I tend to add more grain than normal, so it's kind of a hint to be able to tell if I've done that. All right. And by going in and affecting the hue of the whole image, I can change this and uh, this hue up here and these trees that have the same hue, I'm affecting them both at the same time, which again kind of brings everything into the same image, a little bit baked in, a little bit more, feels a tad bit more real. All right, I'm just adding a little bit of a dark to this bottom to kind of bring your attention up into the photo. And I think I, I like how this has turned out now. Um, so let's look at a before and after before and then finished so yeah that's how i would add these type of light rays into this image um i don't think it's perfect um but i think it looks pretty good so um let me know if you have any other questions about this and i hope you learned something uh thank you for watching all right bye